Nikodim's got there and he's turned the defence, there's his foul! Super stuff! This is the Bishan Stadium, a dream stadium for the S-League organisers, a dream for us commentators seated in comfort, a dream pitch to play on any time of the year, and tonight a dream coming true perhaps for the SAF FC Warriors, especially their coach, Fandi Ahmad, who has won everything in his football playing career, and now in his rookie season as coach, he's most likely a winner again. That man is a winner in life, all right, and I'm sure SAF FC Lieutenant Colonel Kok Wailong certainly knew a winner when he took Fundy on and said never mind if it's his first season I'm sure things will go all right and it's certainly going more than fine five matches on the trot they've won in succession Nasri Nasser player of the sea of the month at least in the Straits Times he won that award ahead of Mirko Grabovac who came in a very close second and Mirko has climbed up to the top of the top scorers charge so everything is going the SAF FC's Warriors way at the moment but if any team would find it painful to play against them, it must be this team in blue, the Protectors or the Dragons as they're known. Ekmar Gonsalves, who was so sympathetically pipped last season to the top scorer award, now finds Grabovac ahead of him again due to his suspension last week. And he'll want to prove a thing or two in his duels with him. And of course, they are the champions. Even if they're going to go out go out in style and here on their home ground they have been rock solid especially when it comes to playing against the big teams a look at the lineups right now for home united an unchanged lineup with yazid yassin in goal a uh, very fluid watertight back line of sasi kuma id iskanda and supramani and of course along those flanks playing as wing backs gusta guzarisha and faris mohammed and that's where the battle will begin this evening for the saf fc Except for Rafi Ali and Razif Mahmoud who have been playing in and out of games. They have a full side and as I said earlier on, the battle down the flanks is so important. Tan Kim Leng versus Gusta Guzarisha, Hafiz Jahami versus Faris Mohammed. And let's not forget too, the strikers who score goals will win games for you. And in both sides, they have Mirko Grobovac and Gonsalves for the SAF and Home United respectively. SK Kennedy is given the task of officiating a match which carried a bigger magnitude last season but that does not mean it's very important a uh, very less important this season because uh, if you see over the years those uniform teams especially these two police and saf have always played their hearts out they've had their own competitions to see which one has had the upper hand and both sides with prodigious talents on and off the bench will now want a thing or two to prove in this evening's game at the Bishan Stadium. It's well set up. Remember, four points more will assure SAF FC of the title. And it is a pure, the biggest understatement for us to say that it is their title to lose. So the champions versus the champions elect. As they get underway with Grabovac already creating havoc, weaving his way past three defenders. Oh, it's well won that time by Faris Mohammed. Nicely given out as well. He wins a free kick. And this is where Home United really have to keep it together as a team because they have been playing well especially after the start of the uh, second half of the S League they have crept back to third position in their bid to at least finish second or give a real huge fight a battle maybe a massive cry out to SAF FC that they're not finished yet but uh, really they have to concentrate because they have been given chances to win games this season oh well Rizal Hassan almost misjudged that header from Alexander Durich it seemed pretty harmless until it was dipping and Rizal kept his head to the ball. Blinded a little bit for the headlights, perhaps. But uh, great header won by Durich, looped it over. Rizal watched it all the way. As I said, blinded by the floodlights of the stadium. But it was no problem in the end for the national number one custodian. Those personal duels continue in between the post as well. We've got the national number one and two goalkeepers playing for either side respectively. Miko Maraka spreading play wide to that danger man once again, Mirko Grabovac. 
pretty fast feet, dancing shoes as they call him. Still tapping around, and that's a four ball given out by Nenad Bacina, who has been in sparkling form over the last few weeks. Ernie Tapai, who last week was uh, guilty of missing a few simple chances in front of goal, and that really has been the Achilles heel of the home United players. They've had their chances in front of goal, they've had opportunities to close games out, especially against weaker opposition. They haven't done that. Alexander Duic powering his way forward. This is an impressive run, but a great tackle in the end by Nena Bacina. First time shot was on, taken by Gusta Guzarisha on his weaker foot, but uh, it gave Rizal Hassan no problems at all. A total of 16 former and current national players, and that's uh, how much these two sides have in their depth. That's one of the current national ones, Gusta Guzarisha. They have four current national ones, Home United, and a massive seven for SAF FC. And that's one of them, Ahmad Latif Kamarudin. He looked a little weary in front of goal during the warm-up matches uh, and uh, during those shoot-arounds before the start of the game, but uh, you can never judge from those shoot-arounds. These strikers, when it comes to the game in itself, the hunger and the appetite has doubled, especially for a game like this. It can't get any bigger for the SAF FC. Well, they've said the Warriors have won matches against weaker opposition, but over the past fortnight, they have played against teams in the top half of the league, Geelong and Jurong, and they've hammered them more than anything else just to show their credentials as champions. Gusta Guzarisha saying, what was that for? Well, a slight obstruction, and it really wasn't his fault. Baraka, that was a little clearer from Gusta Guzarisha. Trailing foot, which came in very late. Kennedy will uh, have a few words with Gusta, but uh, perhaps it's a little too early to flash out the yellow card. Was more of a uh, poor timing than malice, really. But it does mean that SAF FC have a free kick. And they've really been taking advantage of such situations, capitalizing on any dead ball situations. And what's impressed me most about SAF FC this season is that whenever they have their noses up in front, especially with a, a brace of goals, a two-goal lead, Nasri Nasser and guys know how to hold it up, tighten up their defense, and play the game out. That's the stuff of champions. And that's what they were complaining about, Home United last season. A little too boring, perhaps, playing out those 1-0 victories, but it's those 1-0 victories against weaker opposition that gives you championships. Another foul by Gustav Guzarisha, perhaps testing the nerve of SK Kennedy. Merko Grabovac, well won by Rennie Anderson. Ernie Tapai, much bigger game need needed from him. But Salvis, the touch a little too feeble, taken away by Hafizad Jahami. Poor ball by Hafizad though. The consolation is that it doesn't go out for a goal kick, but a throw in very deep in the uh, Home United defensive third. Well, a very interesting matchup between the Singapore Armed Forces and Home United. Both sides with similar styles of play, employing 3-5-2 formations. Both sides love to play the ball along ground. They don't bypass their midfield. They love to play it along, and they have fighters and biters in midfield. People like Ernie Tapai and Nasri Nasser, plus creative influences like this guy, Vinko Maraka, and of course, Rennie Anderson. So if you look at uh, everything else, it has been uh, a very similar pattern and style of play between Home United and uh, SAF FC. The only difference is that the predators of the SAF, well, they've just been much more lethal in front of goal. Well won by S. Supermani. Time for Rini Anderson and for Ernie Tapai. Poor ball though by Tapai. Hafiza Jahami comes away with it, sensibly checks. Maraka. Great work by Vinko Maraka. Oh, well won. Idi Iskanda. He saw it coming all the way. Very well read. 
but uh, a very bright start for Vinko and uh, Mirko Grabovac, who've been weaving their way and dancing around their opponents. It must be a huge relief for these two players playing on a pitch like this, especially coming out of their home stadium in uh, Jurong, where it's just absolutely bouncy and almost unplayable. Zainal Zainudin, Vaselko Paponya. Still Grabovac, close ball control, supremely talented player. It'll be a corner to SAF FC. On the ascendancy, very early on in this game, as I said, they certainly know how to sniff out their goals. They thirst for it, and they know how to close it right after that, frustrating their opponents endlessly. Vaselko jumps for it, ID gets it first. It's well cleared. Vinko Maraka will play it all the way back, and this has been the story so far of the game. Looks as if it's SAF FC playing at home and not home United. Great tackle by ID Iskander. That's a superb tackle despite the protestations of the uh, SAF fans. Kim Ling certainly got caught. I don't think he was making a lot of it, but it was a very good challenge by ID. Look at that brilliant challenge from him. A trailing foot perhaps. A little naughty in that aspect, but a defender will always say that he was protecting himself. He is a protector after all. It'll be a second corner for SAS FC. But Selka Paponia, great save by Yazid Yassin. And prevented from going out for a corner by Rennie Anderson. So the first real opportunity of the game, and uh, not surprisingly, it falls to SAF FC. There you are, Ahmad Latif in front of goal, and selfishly decided to leave it if he had just nipped the ball, taken a touch. It might have been uh, a different story altogether. But I'm sure Holm will be encouraged by that. Not by that pass, though, by Ekmar Gonsalves. A little rusty after his one-week layoff. Machina, well cleared. Ahmad Latif, think the header down very well. Aidi Sharin plays it safe all the way back to Yasin Yasin. Gonsalves will jump for this, but Bacina, splendid defending from him once again. An unsung hero, yeah, and he has been just that. Well, they've lived their season on a wing and a few prayers, and their wings have certainly shown up. SAF FC with Tang Kim Ling and Hafiz Jahami. Their prayers have always been answered with uh, their other teams losing. Zainal Zainuddin does well in midfield. Here's Hafiz Jahami, a clay for handball. That's well, it wasn't going to be it. It was definitely ball to hand from uh, Supermani. Good play from him, but they're dilly dallying a little too much. Finally, it's clear. Good work by Home United, much to the admiration of their fans. Ernie Tapai now. Oh, that's a foul, surely, by Zainal Zainuddin. A little push on Tapai, and it's going to be a free kick to Home United with 10 minutes of play gone by. SAF FC having the better of the game. But Home United, glad that it's still goalless, have a chance to get right back. Superb tackle once again by Bacina. Nothing gets past him. With Rafi injured and Hairi swap there, I guess uh, he needs a little more of a solid backup in the form of Paponia and uh, Bacina. And Bacina is certainly providing it at the moment. A lot of Holmes' troubles in the first half of the season was the fact that they never really had a good goal scorer to partner Ekmar Gonsalves up front. Gonsalves, a proven goal scorer. He's been here since the inception of the S League. He's given yeoman service to the league. He's represented it. A great ambassador of the S League. He has been. But with every good striker, they need a support up front. And their support system has come in Alexander Durich. And that in some ways has uh, resulted in the improvement and the fortunes of Home United. Good work by Ahmad Latif. Nasri Nasser was closely watched by S. Supermani, who seldom puts a foot wrong in his own penalty box. Latif's shot easily blocked that time. Good header, sensible one from Zainal Zainuddin. Hafizat Jahami given away, but neither team. Onside is Mirko Grabovac. This could be danger for Home United. Well, he slipped it through. He caught uh, the first defender, but not the covering one. 
Zainal Zainuddin. That was uh, not offside. Oh dear. Sasi Kuma has to chase this one down, and it's onside from uh, Nasri. He puts the ball in the net brilliantly, but the referee is actually called for a free kick to SAF FC about uh, five or ten yards behind him, which is a strange decision if he had allowed play to go on. That Nasri Nasri shot was certainly on target, and he was onside because S. Supermani, with a moment's hesitation, came right back, denied the ball going back to his goalkeeper and almost put his fellow defenders in trouble. An uncertain start for home United. They have been under pressure, and whenever they've had the ball in midfield, Tafai and Anderson haven't been able to do much with it. In every department, the SAF FC have had the upper hand, and now they have a chance to take the lead. Vaselko Paponia with a booming effort at goal, well blocked by Idi Skanda. Kimling picks it up. No foul, that's for sure. Kimling certainly made the most of that one. But it does go out for a throw into SAF. He's been heavily involved in the opening few minutes, Tan Kimling. Rabovaj tried to sell the dummy. Idi Skanda didn't buy it one single cent. Busta, and once again, the comprehension in midfield for uh, Home United is very much lacking. It's non-existent at the moment. Faris Muhammad. Well, perhaps a surprising scoreline from the Jurong East Stadium. Jurong Cobras, who have slipped considerably ever since the S League restarted there. A goal down to Tampanis Rovers. Naha Dawood is the goal scorer. Another lovely ball floated over the head of uh, a static Gusta Guzarisha. Kim Leng latches onto it. The ball goes out, but it's a uh, last touch by Gusta. Much to his astonishment. And Kim Leng will just accept it with a silent little glance at the referee and says, thank you very much. Well, you can see the vulnerability in uh, Gusta Guzarisha down the left side of... Uh, the home United defense, and I think Fandi Ahmad is almost telling his players to take advantage of it. They've been playing high balls over his head, and it's dropped just behind the defenders. It's an open goal, and it's 1 0 to SAF FC. You could see it coming, and it's the player of the month, Nasri Nasser, his second goal in as many games. And Yazid Yassin was so uncertain coming out of his line he would have done much better staying on it because the ball was swerving away from him and Nasri had the whole goal post gaping he just had to do the needful and plant it right into the back of the net from the way play has been going it's a deserved lead for SAF FC and we all know how well they can shut these games off after taking a goal lead it was almost that they were playing around with a weaker opposition in the early part of the second half of the season to save the big matches for these big guns like Home United, Jurong and Geelong. And now they're playing perhaps the best football of their season. It was a fixture here last season that Home United won so convincingly by two goals to nil that virtually wrapped up the title for them. Gonsalves did very well, Ernie Tapai was just a shade too slow. Grabovac uses his physical presence so very well yet again. Oh, lovely skill. Twice he's defeated Gustav Guzarisha, still chasing back though Gustav to his credit. And Grabovac talk about playing, playing with your opponent, teasing them. And that's a teasing ball as well to Tan Kim Leng to run on to. Latif, Kim Leng, tackled by Anderson. Paponya, who's had so much time and so little to do in defense that he's decided to join them in midfield. Maraka. Well, the party tricks are out at the moment for SAF FC, and we can't blame them at all. There is Yasid, a moment's folly. And you almost forget that he made a blinding save from Vaselko Paponya just about five minutes ago. number two playing against Rizal Hassan well 
that certainly didn't give any more of a notice to national selectors about his claim to take the place of Rizal in the national side. Only Tapai. Well, he needs to inject something in midfield at the moment, Ernie Tapai, because the movement is absolutely non-existent. It's not as fluid as Home United would like it to be. It's not a Home United kind of thing, especially with uh, Bacina playing brilliantly well in defense. Alexander Duric latches onto this. Duric with some space now. Maris Mohamed Duric asks for the return. He had taken up a very good position, just a little too slow, and Tapai showed a little too much of the ball. Idil Sharin couldn't get onto it. Nasri Nasir takes it away, nutmeg. As I said, the party pieces are coming out and they're playing champagne quality football. Tan Kim Leng with a run all the way inside, a lunging tackle taking it away from him finally. Nasri and they play themselves into too little room, too little time, too little space and it's cleared by Home United who show them how to play the short one-twos. But it's SAF who are showing the way at the moment with their football and their one goal lead. Alexander Duric, he certainly has the pace over for Selka Papanya. Ekmar Gonsalves, that ball floated for him to run onto the flanks ahead of Heidi Swap. No support whatsoever for Ekmar, but it's a very intelligent ball played for Ernie Tafai. Well watched by Heidi Swap. Supermani trying to just clip it into space. Tafai does get onto it, but he can't do anything more than uh, hit it all the way back to Rizal Hassan. Rizal has been in superb form. Make no note about it as well, because uh, Rizal, well, despite the fact that he has been almost lazy and uh, doesn't even need to be called upon. By lazy, I mean that he's not even called upon to do work due to the quality and the dominance of SAF this season. But despite the fact that he's had very little to do. Whenever he's called upon, he has been very alert. He has certainly been the most eye-catching, perhaps the most outstanding goalkeeper in the league this season. Good ball by Ernie Tapai. This is much better from Home United. The movement is better. The cross is, well, it didn't speak volumes of uh, the kind of quick one-touch passing that appeared before Alexander Durich got the ball. Nineteen minutes have passed. SAF FC with a bright start to the game. And Alexander Duric's early header, which was well saved by a stretched Rizal Hassan, now sees his team needing some piece of magic, some piece of good fortune perhaps to appear. And they need it soon. SAF FC wouldn't mind a point from this game. But Home United need three. Super money. Nice ball. Great work by Rennie Anderson. Rizal Hassan gets onto it before him. Just a little slow on the takeoff, uh, Rennie Anderson. Otherwise, that was a golden opportunity for the Dane be much more influential in the second half of the season. Tapai floats this one in. Paponya, well, he slides it away rather easily. Tapai, well, they've tightened the midfield, that's for sure, Home United, over the last couple of minutes. It's resulted in not only more chances, but uh, less movement for SAF FC in the middle of the pitch. Hafizad, good work from him. Very good work. Vinko Maraka saw the space and just goes past. Ernie Tafai, Ideal Sharin failed to get onto it, but Anderson is there. That's a lovely ball by Ronnie Anderson. Gonsalves with a lovely header, instinctive effort at goal. That's the reason why he was top scorer until last week when Grabovac took over. Most of his goals have come that way. Either a back-to-goal shot on a turn or a looping header. His awareness in the penalty box is amazing consider the fact that uh, every season he has played for Home United, he has uh, given them double-digit returns. That just speaks volumes for the Brazilian. That's a 
throw into Hope United. was right, but it uh, just came off the head of Zainal Zainuddin. Faris Muhammad did brilliantly well. There's space over at the far side for Rooney Anderson, but uh, the cross just came in a little too late. They have to start building all over again. Gustav Guzarisha, where's the movement in front of him? There's nothing. And it can't keep the flow and the impetus of the attack alive. Idol Sharin tried his very best against Nasri Nasser, but Nasri has always outmuscled anyone who's tried to do that with him. Great tackle that time by Arsasi Kuma. That's one way to tackle Miracle Grababai. Just get to the ball before he does. And there's some space now for Miracle. Sasi Kuma gets all the way back. Miracle Grababai, lovely tackle by Arsasi Kuma. Brilliant play by the former national player. That will certainly catch the eye of the national selectors. Miracle Grababai got him for dead. And the injury was caused with a clash with his own goalkeeper more than anything else. There you are, left him for dead. But look at this lunging tackle that saved his team from going two goals down. That would have been a real catastrophe if Home United were to go 2 0 down in these first 25 minutes. Especially at this moment of the game where they seem to be gaining momentum with each minute and each pass in midfield. They've been tightening things up, but in defense. They just went to sleep for a little while, and that lax play almost resulted in Grabovac, who has taken advantage of such situations and punished teams time and time again this season. For just that slight indifference at the back, it's always Grabovac's message of telling the opposition, hey, I'm not around for five minutes, but I'm still in the game. It was goal bound all the way, and Robert Alberts has to thank his injured defender for keeping his eye on the ball. And not only did he not give away a penalty, he prevented the ball from going into the net. Great work by Arsasi Kuma. Yazid does well. Poor clearance from uh, Supramani. Kibling. Maraka. Oh, great work by Vinko Maraca. Nice cross as well. Nenad Bacina. Well, when they've won by solid three goals, he has always given the goods to them. Delivered it with those headers from corners and dead ball situations. That time he stayed up. I mean, with uh, the SAF having such a dominance in the game at the moment, and Home United not even finding a way through midfield, Perhaps he thought, maybe I'm not needed at the back. Stay up front for a short little while, and he almost profited from that cross. That perhaps summed up uh, SAF FC's displays this season. So good in the flanks, so good with their crosses. Gonsalves to Gusta, back to Ekmar Gonsalves. Gonsalves needs to produce something from here. Well, they saw that all the way, but Gusta does very well to win it back. Lovely effort at goal! That should have been one all. Ruddy Anderson, he saw the gap. It was a difficult shot to produce in the circumstance because it was running away from him. He had to wrap his foot around the ball, but look at that effort at goal. And maybe that's a key to unlocking this SAF FC defense. We've shown no loopholes and no, shine, no signs of letting up at the moment. Well, it looked closer from uh, the other angle than it did from behind the goal post. As I said, it could be the key to unlocking this SAF FC defense. Shots from distance. And certainly their wing backs have got to be more involved. Tapai does well. Alexander Duric to Gusta Guzarisha. Duric. Great work from Alexander Duric. A shot at goal perhaps. He uses Faris Mohamed. Oh, poor control by Faris. At first touch, just let him down. Ideal Sharin with a tame effort at goal, which Rizal saw all the way. It was a wasted opportunity. If Faris had caught that one down or just dinked it across first time, Gonsalves saw blood and wanted to attack. You could see it in Gonsalves' eyes as the ball came to Faris, but Faris 
but never got it under control. And the problem at the moment with Home United is that down the other side, where Tan Kim Ling has been having a field day, Gustav Guzarisha, well, not only has he filled in his defensive uh, abilities and giving away unnecessary free kicks, but uh, Gusta, whenever the team has been on the offensive, Gusta Guzarisha has, uh, instead of uh, playing down the flanks and stretching the play to create more width in the side, he has been going more towards the middle. He's definitely a more creative player than a wing back. Perhaps that's been their folly so far for Home United. We hear that at the Jurong East Stadium. It's more woes for Jurong Cobras. They're 2-0 down at the moment to Tampanese. Good news is that Risat Sedjic has scored his first goal for Tampanese Rovers. The Stags have always played well against those good sides. Jurong FC at the moment. Well, they're definitely on a slide. A chance for Alexander Duric, it's going in, it is in, it's 1-0! We have a game in our hands now! Robert Albert salutes that. It was a brilliant pass played from midfield. Stretched, pierced through the defence. A hole was poked, Nenad Bacina couldn't catch up with Alexander Duric. And so calmly, a Croatian just slid the ball underneath Rizal Hassan, that's all he had to do. Watch it go all the way in. That SAFFC defense, which I just praised 15 minutes ago for being able to just close games out, has been breached. Yazid Yasin is still having trouble with those aerial duels. He will win a free kick that time, and he'll thank his lucky stars as the Home United cheerleaders Voted, of course, the best in the S League. At least they still keep that intact with SAF streaking away with a title. But they have every reason now to finally get up on their feet because their team have leveled the scores. And over the last 10 minutes of play, they have crept right back into the game after a somewhat nervous opening 10 minutes. And this is the man that got the goal, Alexander Duric. Good ball played inside to Rennie Anderson who's created openings after openings. Gonsalves, a shot is on for Gonsalves, couldn't find the angle, lost it in the end for Pamponia, and finally cleared by Nenad Bacina. Idi Iskanda, that's a very intelligent header right out to uh, Gusta Kuzarisha. And we'd like to see Gusta hugging that left flank a little more if Home United are to be more involved in this game. They have to have a say in the S-League. They are the champions after all. Poor ball by Faris Mohammed, easily cleared. Here's Mirko Grabovac, and that's a foul by Arsasi Kuma. That's a second yellow card dished out to Home United. First it was Gusta, now Sasi. That could be a problem for Sasi Kuma because uh, it would mean he certainly has to watch his tackles a little more. He's got the tendency to time his tackles a little wayward at times. Although, if you look back at that saving tackle he made on Grabovac, five minutes ago, which prevented Grabovac from running on and scoring a goal, it has now proved to be very priceless. 15 minutes left in this first half. Intriguing and very exciting first half. It certainly shows that in the S League, if you're given a pitch like this, smooth playing surface, top quality sides like uh, Home United and SAF can produce the kind of exhilarating football that uh, Singaporeans long to have. Certainly a call to the SME committee to look at more pitches to be transformed into the Bishan Stadium-like quality. Yazid Yassin, we'll have to watch this. He has been very suspect with those crosses. Maybe not coming for this would be a good idea. Oof. Zad Jauhami decided to take it with his right foot and it swerved towards goal. And it's not judging the flight of the ball at the moment, Yazid. His confidence certainly weakened by uh, his 
mistiming the cross to allow Nasri to score the opening goal for SAF. But at least he'll be happier to note that they're back on level terms now thanks to Alexander Duric. Strange decision by Kennedy. Gave a foul to SAF FC. But it was 50-50 then. So did Ekmar Gonsalves. It wasn't him who uh, gave away the free kick. It was Rennie Anderson in midfield. Anderson is battling for this ball. That's a foul, surely, but uh, Kennedy says no. Carry on playing. Well, the resurgence of Home United in this game must certainly be attributed to the continuing and growing presence and influence of Rennie Anderson in midfield. Ever since... Uh, Anderson got himself more involved and started playing and spraying those passes around. Home have got back into the game. There he is. They need him. It's more of a catalyst in the side than anything else. The fulcrum in that midfield, that creative approach needed to just poke balls behind defenders. Not like that, of course, from uh, Gusta, but uh, more of a pragmatic approach, playing it along the ground. Digging, digging until an opening was sourced and Alexander Durich took full advantage of it. And to his credit as well, Ernie Tapai has decided to step up his work rate. Here he is on the ball. First time effort, it's going out for a corner. No, well done, Rizal Hassan. The ball hasn't been dead too often in this game, which is a real credit to both sides. Tapai is still chasing all these balls, but it's in the air at the moment, which certainly is one of his strengths. Gusta cushioned that brilliantly. And once again, a disappointing pass from a man who is known for his creative prowess. Good work by Harry Swap. And it continues with a very intelligent ball. His vision was uh, impeccable. But it just had too much weight, that pass. Top high. He almost begs for possession. Running all over the park just to get a little touch on the ball. And here he is again, but well closed down by Tan Kim Leng. Well, that surely wasn't a foul. Well, SK Kennedy has blown for it. Top high did pull Kim Leng back. And uh, perhaps a little foolish on the part of Ernie Tapai because even if Kim Leng had broken free, there was uh, a lot of cover at the back and I don't think Kim Leng would have got onto the ball. But it is a free kick. Abad Latif lays it up for Nazri Nasser and that time Yazid Yassin made up for his earlier mistake. The Nazri Yazid duel continues. That would have been one of the goals of the season. Well-struck folly. I remember when Nasri first came up for the national team, everybody was making fun of his shots at goal and saying that uh, it was more rugby clearances more than anything else. But it has improved over the years, and it was shown right there. Kept his body down low. The technique was brilliant. Yazid tipped it onto the crossbar. It's a corner to SAF. It's another opportunity. They have won the aerial duels, that's for sure. Harry Swap. This time they push up very quickly, Home United. Gusta has the opportunity on the ball, but once again, Kim Leng gets onto it. In a flash, Yazid has to clear, does well. But what a brilliant save that time from Yazid Yasin. And that is what Yazid is good for. Perhaps a weakness in coming out and claiming crosses, which the SAF have exploited. But when it comes to quick first-time reflexes, as shown in his futsal commitments, that effort from Nasri was whizzing into goal until Yazid got a fingertip to it. Great piece of football from both goalkeeper and defender. And they're conceding unnecessary free kicks. Home United. They will claim that the SAF have gone down a little too free, feebly and uh, the players have been more fragile than ever this evening. But still, there's no need to uh, give people like Vasilko Paponia opportunities for direct shot at goal. We've seen Paponia score from distances like this before. He will try a pot shot yet again. And for the second time, it's easily cleared. It doesn't even get past the second defensive wall. 
they have been very unconvincing in the air, Home United. And uh, it has been SAF FC always come out tops. Whenever you see a ball flighted right up in the sky. It's quite surprising considering that uh, it's a back line. Home United of uh, it's almost a national side's back line. Tall and solid. But they haven't been as watertight this season as they have last. And certainly gaps have been found opening up. Especially in the opening half of the season. 5-2 defeat here to Geylang was their worst. Ekmar Gonsalves, lovely play from him. Faris Mohamed, a much better cross needed from him. Doesn't deliver it yet again. He has been disappointing, Faris. But here's an opportunity to take on Hafizad, who was too wily. And easily cleared to Nasri Nasser, who has, for me, been the most outstanding SAF FC player in the first half. Maraka, who started the game brightly, to Nasri, who has continued his bright start. And it'll be Gusta, who has to watch. He has already have a, had a yellow card from SK Kennedy. Well, I did say the game could be won down the flanks. And at the moment, SAF FC are winning that battle down the flanks. Kimling and Hafizad have won it over Faris Mohammed and Gusta Guzarisha. Grabovac is not offside. Great effort at goal. It was going out all the way. And well, the referee has signaled the corner, much to the disgust and the dismay of uh, the Home United officials. Robert Elbert in particular, who has gone screaming out of his box. Fresh instructions to his players. It'll be the third corner of the game to SAF FC. But I tell you what, this Home United defense, a famed one last season as well, which had the reputation of being stingy. This season, especially in this game, it lacks a certain comprehension at the back. Yazid will go for this, and as I said again, the comprehension is lacking. Goalkeeper and defender clashing. Ernie Tapai. Quickly and well closed down by Vinko Maraka. Space now for the fast improving Rennie Anderson. That's another lovely ball by Rennie Anderson. Well covered that time by Bacina over Gonsalves. His ability to sniff openings, Anderson, that uh, Home United need more of. Iskanda to uh, his brother Idil. All the way back to Sasi Kuma. Remember over at the Jurong East Stadium, 2-0 to Tampanis Robus against a fast-floundering Jurong FC. And their two strikers, Risat Sedjic and Naha Daud, have scored. Ernie Tapai now for Home United. Well, really pulled that pass into the arms of uh, Rizal Hassan. Great tackle from Sasi Kuma. Afizan, very impressive so far in the game. Once again, saw an opening latched onto it. Great tackle that time from Faris Mohammed. Referee SK Kennedy was right beside the play all the way. Good work from Kennedy. Idil, back to Tapai. There's some space for Thomas Anderson, but he decides on a first time cross to Alexander Durich, who attacked the ball ahead of Gonsalves. Gonsalves is saying, hey, I had control over it. Run onto an open space, I could have flicked it onto you. But once you've scored a goal, the confidence is sky high and you want another opportunity almost immediately. Anderson. Tafai. There's more, much more movement in midfield now for home united which is great to see the fluidity of the passes have been impressive as well but china concedes the free kick with four minutes left of this first half this will be a great time to put one in and then talk about defensive strategies in the second half for the protectors and there's the man who's won everything a winner in his life Fandi Ahmad. i don't think in his wildest dreams he thought that uh, rookie season will end up this successful I'm sure with a strength in his squad he would know that he had more than a chance but this successful well even Fundy be 
uh, a little startled by it as well. Well, it's a lull in a match that has never let up in the first 40 minutes, and you do expect it. I mean, you don't expect them to be going at each other's throats all the way through. But certainly, this will be the calm before a certain storm to be expected at the Bishan Stadium. As I said, the SAF Warriors will be happy with just a point, but Home United will not be. Tafai working very hard in midfield. Those two number sevens, Tafai and Nasri Nasser. Bernie Anderson, good work from Gusta Guzarisha. Here's Aido Sharin who has done the dirty work in midfield, closing them down and winning battles. Good ball once again. It goes all the way through. Oh, well, Anderson has a chance. Oh, come on, he's going to score there. He had to score. Well, look at this. Good work from Durich. A complete miss kick, which turned out to be a fortuitous pass to Rennie Anderson. All he had to do was blast it and keep it down. But it's, he decided to place it. There you are. It was so feeble in the end that Rizal Hassan had all the time in the world to get down to it. Can afford a wry smile now. But in his mind, I'm sure he knew that he had to score. It'll be just a mandatory a minute added to uh, this first half, which has not only produced golden opportunities, More importantly, it has produced some top quality football from two very good sides. And home have certainly ended the half right in key and on a brighter swing of things. Vasilko Papanya did well with the header. Gusta, that's a lovely first touch. Great work by Gusta Guzarisha. Well, he's got himself into a space where he'll play it out for a corner. Does well, Gusta. He knew what he was doing all the way then. The youngster. And here's a chance for Anderson perhaps to atone for his miss earlier. It's just the first corner of the game for home. Sasi Kumar has gone up for this. Ekmar Gonsalves sniffs something. He will be upset with himself for missing that volley earlier on. And here's a chance. Oh, if it had gone past Paponya, Ekmar was right there. And yet, goal almost screaming out of his lungs then. Great work by Vaselko Paponya. Anderson did very well. Gets a throw and nothing else in the end, but it was almost going out. Did well to retrieve it. Here's Tapai. Some space for Anderson all the way back to Gusta. The SAF FC are pushing up, but Gusta can take a crack at goal. Went through a sea of uh, defenders. And <laughs> really just... It was a body shape more than anything else, which dragged the ball wide off Riz Al Hassan. But we're playing the last minute of this first half. And there'll be just another minute added by referee SK Kennedy. In fact, we're playing that added minute right now. Well, they certainly will be heartened by the way they ended this first half and the way they did not let their heads drop and come back after conceding a very early goal to Nasri Nasser. Nenad Bacina. We sell up see him moving up front now. And that's a credit to Home United because these opportunities will arise for people like Ekma and Alexander Duric. Tapai, it's a lovely ball. Oh, it, oh, it almost sneaked through. Great work by Zainal Zainuddin. Gusta does well in midfield. The Komaraka ran straight into Gusta Guzarisha. Good work once again by Gusta. But he's looking at that space where he's supposed to be occupying, and nobody's right there. So they're just passing the ball and playing out this first half, perhaps. Sasi Kuma, maybe one last effort throw at the dice. No, it's the referee who has the final say right now. SK Kennedy brings an end to a very intriguing and fun-filled first half. Far, far from, from mediocre. Nazri Nasser got the SAF FC leading in the first 20 minutes. They had 
home United and the protectors right at their grasp. But this guy, Alexander Duric, got them right back. And with a prompting of Rennie Anderson and Ernie Tapai becoming more and more influential in midfield, Home United have got themselves back in the game and surely they will sense that they have a chance to take three points against SAFFC. We'll have the highlights and the answers coming up in the second half right after this. Don't go away. Welcome back. We're live at the Bishan Stadium and it's still half time between Home United and SAF FC. One all between those two sides, of course. We expect a real battle between two uniform sides who have been perennial rivals. It came to a stage, of course, in the late uh, 80s and early 90s where sometimes it's okay not to win the league for either uh, Singapore Armed Forces or the police sides as long as they beat each other their annual competition trying to remember what the name of that competition is but uh, it certainly spurred interests star names and loads of dramatics over the years they've since let go of that but uh, they have been the two prominent sides in the S League and since the arrival of Robert Alberts home United has gone right up there to join the ranks of SAF FC as perennial favorites. They set it ready to kick off home United. The protectors not only need to protect, but they need an offensive display of some sorts, of some immense proportions in this second half in order to come out with the much needed three points. And looking at the fixtures for SAF FC, this seems to be the one that poses the biggest problems for them. Hari Swap taking over from Rafi Ali this evening. Sweeping. Well cleared. Anderson. Ball through was well cut out once again by Hafiza Jahami. Look at Nasri getting involved in midfield. Pacina. Another sound, no-nonsense game from him. He isn't one of those colourful, flashy players, Nenad Bacina. But you know what you're going to get from him. Anderson flicking it on, just trying to push the ball and keep the imp impetus of this attack on. The initiative is still very much with the protectors. And they will want to start this game in the second half a little less cautiously than they did in the first, where by starting so cautiously, they just found that uh, they could never ever get themselves back in the swing of things. Durich. A little too hefty on the pass. And perhaps both sides, we do expect to start this second half on lower key. They're just waiting for something to explode. Kind of a jack-in-the-box sort of situation. Iskanda, great work from ID Iskanda. And here's Gusta Guzarisha. Oh, great play by Gusta Guzarisha. Well, as I said, we needed a jack-in-the-box to happen. It almost did then. And SAF have to clear. Nasri is very quickly closed down and great work by Ernie Tapai. Well, the game plan for the second half, definitely from uh, the SAF, or should I say Home United, to close those gaps in midfield because in the opening 10 minutes they were not only ruling the park they were running all over the home united players because the saf creative sources had so much time on the ball that's a disappointing throw from gusta guzarisha needlessly given away we can't do that from throw-ins that's paponya who had an effort that was superbly saved by Yazid in the first half. He's not the quickest of defenders, 
but he does position himself very well. Gusta, sublime skills yet again. And it's a touch too heavy for Ekman Gonsalves. But it's a much better start in the second half for the number 19 from Home United, Gusta Guzarisha. On a yellow card, a nightmarish opening 10 minutes. That's all credit to the youngster who lost out in the head at that time, but it's all credit to him to actually come back, put all those memories of the first 45 minutes behind him. Have a brighter opening in the second half. Kibling, well controlled, but good work once again by Ideal Sharin in midfield. Ernie Tapai, that's brilliant play from him over Zainal Zainuddin. Tapai goes right through, bursting past Nasri Nasser, but a crunching tackle and a very good one it was as well from Hairi Swap over Ernie Tapai, who is still down injured as the SAF FC continue on their warpath towards more goals. A little unselfish that time, and perhaps that was his only option available. Home United are not happy that. Uh, SAF continued playing despite the fact that Tapai was down, but Tapai was deep inside the SAF half. There you are, a good challenge from uh, Hairi Swap. Got the ball, got a little injured as well, and it was the force of uh, the Tapai run which carried him through and uh, got him this injury at the moment. The Australian who's uh, very much a journeyman in footballing terms. Now happily settled to footballing in Home United and Singapore. Oh, such a key player to the protector's game plan. You seldom get players these days. Paul scores like running from midfield and scoring. Well, Jurong have pulled a goal back against Tampines at the Jurong East Stadium. We'll confirm the goal scorer with you in a short while. Nor Azman Hussein, I've been told, has uh, scored the Jurong goal. Three minutes after the halftime break. And a goal is needed here right now, especially from Home United. Great control by Ekman Gonsalves. Look at him shielding the ball, expertly done. And once again, the pass just hit a little too hard. Harry Swap got himself into trouble by turning away. Is he going to get out of this? Uh, Faris guilty of pulling his jersey back. Uh, if he didn't do that, you would have noted that Harry Swap had turned away from him and had almost nowhere to go. So that was an unnecessary foul to give away. Six minutes have flown by in this uh, second half. They haven't whizzed by like the way they did in the first because it's a much low-key affair in the second half so far with uh, especially SAF FC concentrating a little more on getting their defense marshaled. Yazid Yassin. Aido Sharin will jump for this. Nasri and him both missed it. Early tough by up from injury and still running so very hard in midfield. Puts in a, an enormous amount of work rate. Miracle. Did he keep it in play? He did. But Sasi Kumar was there. Any chance uh, the ball's loose from Mirko Grabovac. You just want to poke it away. And what a splendid challenge it was from Mirko. Otherwise, it would have been 2 1 right now to SAF FC. And with this uh, defensive strategy that SAF have adopted, trying to counter on the break in the second half, it would have been almost been disastrous for Home United to come out down by a goal. They have conceded a free kick to who else but Mirko Grabovac, a creature out of the mundane, as I have been saying every time we've covered an SAF game. Easily headed out by Adi Iskanda. No offside still. They're not pushing up quickly enough, the Home United defence. And they have been very alert as well. Give credit to the SAF FC players. As an opportunity, but great work by Adil Sharin. Came back quick enough to poke it away for a throw-in. Even denied SAF a corner that time. He's done a lot of the dirty work in midfield, Adil Sharin. And this is what he's called upon to do, just to tighten up the gaps and make sure that uh, creative influences like Finko Moraka 
and Nasri Nasser don't get the chance and space to work. They did in the opening 15 minutes, and it was almost killer. But Salvis, his first touch has always been impressive. Tapai, Anderson, good ball. It opens it up now for Faris Mohammed. Took some time to get it down, and because of that, uh, the impetus was gone. Should I say, Idol Sharin was guilty of uh, not controlling the ball fast enough. Rabovac, great skill from him. Here's a chance for Ahmad Latif. Well, I did tell you that during the warm up, during the shoot around, he looked very pensive in front of goal. And it showed then, he had the goal at his mercy. All he had to do was to lift it over the onrushing Yazid Yassin. He couldn't. And the home United defense was breached yet again. They have to hold their line a little better. The fourth corner of the game for the Warriors. And once again, it doesn't get past the first person. Harry Swap will have to get to this first. He does, but he concedes the throw. Taking the place of Rafael. He used to be a regular in the uh, SAF defense. Harry Swap, now 26 years old. It was national team material as well, just a couple of seasons ago. Injuries and uh, loss of fitness have curtailed his career more than anything else, but it's great to see him back on the pitch again. Well, somehow if you're playing for the SAF, you almost will feel that your career is curtailed because of the amount of quality they have. Gonsalves took that one brilliantly! Oh dear! How many more chances do they need? They have another one now with Ronnie Anderson. Cuts inside very well. Durich takes over. And once again, misfiring. Perhaps a little rusty after his week's break, but Ekmar Gonsalves has had a couple of good opportunities already. This one, he usually just finishes off with a plum. He took the ball down brilliantly in his stride. And look at that. A little bit of a miss kick. He wanted to place it and pass it to the far post. Instead, it went right into the body of Rizal Hassan. He did everything right then and accepts the killer touch. A penetrative shot at goal, which he's so famed for, just lacked at the right moment. It was, in fact, in this side in the second half in the game last season where Ekmar killed off SAF FC's hopes with a brilliant opportunistic goal last season. Ekmar once again running onto this. His off the ball running is brilliant, that is for sure. Rizal comes, claims, very confident. Super money, great defending from him. ID, well, they've just stepped up a gear. And they're beginning to ask the questions right now. It surely was a foul on Gonsalves, but it wasn't called by Kennedy. And to Gonsalves' credit, he did not uh, utter anything to the referee at all. Adi Iskanda looking once again for Ekma, who gets onto that ball ahead of Nenad Bacina. been the scourge of uh, SAF FC over the years, Ekman Gonsalves, scoring goals against them almost at will. At that time, he looks like he was playing for them. Great effort at goal, it came off Durich, and Gonsalves is left a frustrated striker. Well, Sasi Kuma wasn't happy with it. It was his momentum that took him into Ahmad Latif Kamarudin more than anything else, but the referee though, decides it will be a free kick for SAF FC and perhaps the right decision that time because Latif had his feet firmly planted on the ground already. We're played 13 minutes in this second 45. It's still one all between Home United and SAF FC. Although Home, I must say, especially at the end of the second half and then at the start of this first have had or should i say at the end of the first half and at the start of this second have had the better of the opportunities an open goal for Rennie anderson 
And another for Egmar Gonsalves. Both chances were feebly taken. And as I said, the difference between those two sides, this season at least, especially in the first half, has been the fact that uh, Home United have lacked that killer instinct, that ability to sniff out chances in front of goal and to take it when presented. For SAF, it has been a different story. They've had goal scoring assistance from almost every department. Good ball by Sasi Kuma. Rennie Anderson now. Where are his options? Oh, that's a lovely ball floated through for Alexander Durich. The goalkeeper committed. And perhaps Faris Mohamed would have done better not to follow Durich. But right now, it's the run of Hafiza Jahami that's catching the eye and the roar of the SAF spectators. No foul. Mirko Grabovac, well, this is some problems right now because he has limped very badly. Gustav Guzarisha sportingly pulls the ball out for treatment to be given to Grabovac. SK Kennedy was right up with the play. Grabovac isn't happy with uh, the kind of treatment that he was given. He expects these treatments uh, week in, week out. But if he gets up from this, it'll be a joke. But uh, look at Rizal committing himself. Good work from Rizal in the sense that when he went for it, he expected to get to the ball. He wanted the ball and he was hungrier for it than uh, Alexander Duric, but the positional sense of Faris Mohammed then, maybe he could have not followed Duric all the way through, could have just uh, hung around the penalty box because when it dropped from Rizal Hassan, it dropped right down in front of nobody else. And here is the uh, foul committed by Sasi Kuma. There you are, it was late. As I said, Sasi Kuma has been guilty over the years of uh, just lunging in a little bit late. He is not a malicious player, he is not vicious, that's for sure. But it's just uh, the timing of the tackles that usually would go awry. Durich helping that one on for Rooney Anderson. And once again, Kennedy kept up with the play. The referee has uh, given a free kick. Such industry and tenacity in midfield from Nasri Nasser this evening. Man doesn't let up. There's some space right now. The cross has to deliver it well. Well, it almost did for Ernie Tapai. Here's a second opportunity for Faris Mohammed. A much better cross for him in this time. It escapes uh, everybody, but Gonsalves will pick this one up. Oh, almost good work from him. Not megging Tan Kim Leng, but Kim Leng kept his eye on the ball. Gonsalves, Duric with an effort at goal. It wasn't easy. And to actually get a connection with the ball deserves credit already. With the outside of the boot, swerved in by Gonsalves. As I said, it wasn't easy, especially with that swerve on the ball, to wrap your foot around it and get it on target. Good effort, though, by Alexander Duric. And the protectors are asking the questions right now. The Warriors want to play this counter-attacking game. And that one was a rather strange decision by SK Kennedy. It looked as if uh, Maraca and Anderson had jumped for the ball fair and square. Grabovac has been shut down very quickly in the second half. And it's great work once again from uh, Home United shutting down and crapping out their opponents. Ernie Tapai has an opportunity. Gonsalves with a chance and blazes it over the bar. Ekma, Ekma, where did you leave your goal-scoring boots today? That's a question that uh, the Dragonettes <laughs> and all of home supporters will be asking. Great work, they cramped down, they worked hard as a unit to get the ball and win the ball back. But Gonsalves skied it from the moment it came off his boots. You knew it was going to be off target. Hafiza Jauhami. Oh, great work by Alexander Duric. Faris, top high. This is a much better display by Home United. Almost akin to a kind of a performance they put in that first half against Tanjong Paga. 
still one all though. As I said, how many more chances do they need? They need to capitalize on one of it and force SAF to come out and attack. A little bit of uh, repairs to be meted out to Ekma. And gives the thumbs up signal to the assistant referee to say that he's all right. Space for Kim Ling. We haven't seen him really in an offensive sense in this uh, second half, which is very good news for Home United. There was nothing from Adi Eskanda. Just followed himself through, not knowing that Kim Ling was right behind him. Faris, well, it's been one of those frustratingly disappointing games for Faris Mohammed. So much talent in the boy. Great overlapping runs. Very quick as well. But it hasn't been one of his more memorable nights. 19 minutes have gone past. And you just feel that uh, the game is beginning to pick up steam right now. And there's reason for the Home United band to strike up the court. Hopefully it is the right court for them. Just suck the protector's ball into the goal, which has been <laughs> their problem so far. What is on the mind of Robert Alberts? It's a much better display in the second half, that's for sure. But I'm sure he's not happy with uh, some gaps left behind. He's complaining that time about uh, the referee's decision not to award a foul. Nasri does brilliantly well in midfield yet again. And that's a lovely ball played through. Wonderful work by the goalkeeper. Brilliant play by Yazid Yassin. Kimling is calling for treatment. So is Yazid. But the impetus and the incentive of the attack is on at the moment. They don't want to lose this. Ekmar Gonsalves will get, get onto it by the... Well... Kim Ling's in an offside position. Yazid is down. It wouldn't be fair for SK Kennedy to continue the game. Yazid, well, he's always got that uh, grin on his face. Sometimes you don't know whether he's grimacing or grinning. But he must be pleased with his work right here. Look at that. Brilliant play by the goalkeeper. He had to be brave, and he certainly was. In fact, it was uh, Kim Ling who pulled out of it, and that's the reason why he has come out uh, the worst of the two casualties. Some more repairs needed. They have Steven Chan, who will be a more than capable replacement for Tan Kim Ling. Down the right flank. Well, they're warming up No Alam Shah. Another forward, perhaps Fundy has seen enough of Ahmad Latif Kamarudin to know that his confidence once again has just deteriorated. He had a, an injury and then right after that, Latif came storming back as colourful as these spectators. Two goals in as many matches, but after last week's display against Jurong, the confidence has dropped yet again. Well, you almost see and Ahmad Latif Kamarudin. Well, no Alam Shah used to play for Sambang. He's doing his national service. And he's right back to the thick of the action again. And as I said, you almost see in Ahmad Latif Kamarudin, a player who's got an abundance of talent, a lot of ability, but he lets himself down more than anything else. There's lack and self-belief. Zainal Zainuddin, good work. Kim Ling's okay. He's back on the pitch, but he's a little slow. Duric gets to it. Great work by Alexander Duric. And Tan Kim Ling fooled into that. Oof. Vinko Maraka really had to stretch that time, and he really had to get to that ball. Well, I'm hearing that uh, from the... Uh, Jurong East Stadium, there is a change in the scoreline. I'll tell you more about it in a short while. Nazri Nasser 
has some space, just a little too hard for uh, the on-rushing Mirko Grabovac, although it must be said that there were a couple of uh, Home United players closing down very quickly on him already by then. Here is uh, Gonsalves, once again, doing all the donkey work up front. Much better work from Kim Lang. And there's a lot of space now for Nasri Nasser. Was the pass hit a little too hard? Great work once again by Sasi Kumar. He has been the most impressive of their three defenders this evening, our Sasi Kumar. And that time he showed that uh, he might be a little slow on the turn. <laughs> and acceleration isn't really part of his game plan. But uh, give him a little dash and a little ground to make up. He is very quick. Dallas Supayan has scored for Jurong. Well, I was telling you about uh, the change in the scoreline. As we watch Vaselka Paponia climb, but couldn't get his header down. Dallas Supayan has equalized for Jurong. Now, the strange thing about that game was that uh, the first time Jurong and Tampanese met at the Tampanese Stadium, it was uh, Tampanese Rovers who were trailing by two goals to nil and they came back to win 4-2 in the second half. Now, Jurong trail by 2-0 in the first half. It's 2 all now. So it could be a reversal of fortunes at the Jurong East Stadium. We'll keep you updated with that. We can tell you it's one all right here in case you've just tuned in. Yasid Yasin, his mistake led to Nasri Nasir's goal, but he more than made up for it with an astounding save from a Nasri screamer. And Alexander Duric equalized for Home United. Although Ekmar Gonsalves and Rennie Anderson have had golden opportunities to put this game and put them in a pole position, they haven't taken it. Here's Rennie Anderson. Been doing the prompting. Got to the ball first, Nasri Nasser times those tackles superbly well. And here he is on the ball, he's been all over the pitch. No Alam Shah. He's very good in the air, the boy. His uh, aerial prowess is certainly one of his strengths. That time, a judge to have just pushed his marker. As Supermani, who has no slouch himself in the air. Recovering from Hairi Swap. Well, I hear there's a change in the scoreline at Jurong East Stadium again. I'll update you on that one. Mirko Grabovac. They asked for handball. <laughs> it was uh, Sasi Kumar's body that kept it away from the referee, but it was certainly handball. And now the break is on for Home United. This is very interesting. Rene Anderson, can they play his right? No, they can't. The pass from Ernie Tapai just wasn't good enough. It had to be hit with precision. It wasn't. Vinko Maraka. Kibling. Grabovac with some space. This could spell danger. Sasi Kumar. He's backtracking, he was watching this. Great save from Yazid Yasin. The shot didn't carry enough power from Noah Lam Shah, but still the goalkeeper had to make a save. And he got down very quickly to that. Great work by Grabovac yet again. Defenders were jockeying, but uh, it left Noah Lam Shah free. Yazid kept his eye on the ball. Home United now, and we were very sure that the game was going to be lifted at some point of the game. And it certainly has over the last couple of minutes. At least the SAF are now more open to offensive ideas. I guess Fundy expected Home United to come right at their throats in the opening minutes of uh, the second half. That's the reason why he asked for a more defensive stance to it. It didn't really happen. So now they say that uh, we'll attack as well, and it's almost like a chess game where Home United are waiting for SAF to commit some players forward so that they have more space in the offensive third. Rennie Anderson, now he's got loads of space. Oh, well, well read. That was very well read by Nena Bacina. Gonsalves did brilliantly well as a striker to peel away and create the space for Ernie Tapai. Uh, that was where Ronnie Anderson was going, and it was superbly read by Nenad Machina. 
Oh, great play once again by Sasi Kuma. Done his man-marking job this evening superbly well. Much better second half for this guy, Gusta Kuzarisha. And just as I say that, Gusta says, oh well, <laughs> let me prove Mark wrong. Well, we told you that there was a change in the scoreline at the Jurong East Stadium, and Tampanis have retaken the lead against Jurong FC. Naha Daud has scored, and it's 3-2 now to Tampanese. Well, it's not a high-scoring affair here, but what this game has lacked in goals, it has certainly made up for creativity, skill, and loads of attacking options. This man has provided a handful of them. Alexander Duric taking away Vaselka Paponya. Can get the cross in, and this will only be the second corner of the game, believe it or not, to Home United. Coming up to the half-hour mark. 16 minutes of this game remaining. It's a nervy end to what has been a night of pure entertainment. These teams go forward, these two sides have entertained, that's for sure. The corner flick to the back post, which is a very good idea. Well, oh, well, what were they thinking of? I think it was Hyrie Swap in the end who cleared it. No, it was Zaino Zainudin who cleared it. Ernie Tapai claimed his innocence against Hyrie Swap. The battle and rages between the two. It was more accidental than anything else. But the home pressure ensues, and it's a third corner now, the second in succession. It was a good idea from Anderson's player to the far post because Rizal has just been plucking fruits in his six-yard box. Home United are going to make a change. It'll be Philip Aotiam Ho who has taken the place of uh, Gusta Guzaricha who has walked out gingerly. So perhaps it's an injury more than anything else for Gusta that he's been taken out because he hasn't played that badly in the second half. But Salvis waiting to pounce on that, but Gina kept his eye on the ball. Faris Mohammed had very little time to measure that one up and take a shot at goal. It was a pot shot more than anything else. I can tell you that uh, news coming in to me is that uh, Tampanese Rovers are now leading by four goals to two at the Jurong East Stadium. Both defenses are cracking up there. I will tell you the goal scorer in a very short while. Stephen Chan has come in, perhaps to tighten up the defense a little bit. They've taken out their most creative source in Vinko Maraka. There is Vinko, who hasn't had a pleasurable second half. And so now, Fundy's option that he's taken up is, if my creative influence is lost there because Home United have been battling harder in midfield, I'll put another battler there, so Let's have a war in the middle of the park. This is getting very interesting. Duric. Still Duric. More than anything else, Stephen Chan has been called in to stamp the influence of that man, Rennie Anderson. But his pass that time didn't warrant any sort of uh, attention to him at all. It'll last come off, well, I thought it last came off uh, Miracle Grabovac, but the assistant referee says no. Well, it's veteran side Farouk who scored a goal avalanche right there at the uh, Jurong East Stadium. I was telling you about 4-2, Tampanese Rovers. I did suggest a Jurong comeback of the Tampanese proportions earlier on, but it's Tampanese who have got that 4-2 lead. It's the uh, it's same scoreline that they won against Jurong in the first half of the season. But the Jurong defense has certainly crumbled. And the breakdown of it really started in that Tampanese game, which they lost by four goals to two. Oh, yes, great work by Oni Tapai. Well, Rizal had no reason to run up there and, uh, well, Ernie had the right to go for that, really, because as a striker, 
going for it. Any striker around the world will tell you that, you know, you just chase these down. There we go. Well, that was fair. Really, that was. Rizal came, claimed that the leg was a little bit high, but he had no hand on the ball at all until Tafai towed it away. It was a very fair challenge. That will be a free kick to SAFFC. Cunning work that time from Hairi Swap. Positioned himself and then fell over. Twelve minutes remaining. There is no offside for Mirko Grabovac. The line once again is really slow and this time it's offside against uh, No Alam Shah. It's the first offside of the game called against either side. But Grabovac really, maybe too much room and too much space for him. He couldn't believe his luck that time. Give credit though to S. Supermani who came back and covered brilliantly. Top high, nice little touch on for Anderson. This is great football. Durich, a space is opening up. Gonsalves, oh well, just a touch too hard that pass from Alexander Durich. If he had controlled it, Ekmar was in space in the penalty box. But the attack is still alive and well. It's cleared by Zainal Zainuddin and finally completed. Grabovac will chase this one down, but it's Supermani who kept his eye on the ball. Great work, well marshaled by S. Supermani that time. The clearance from Idi Eskander wasn't very good. Vaselko Paponia, Nazri Nasir. Tapai, great play from Ernie Tapai. Stephen Chan did get his piece to the ball. Faris Mohammad's nightmare this evening continues, and that's great work by Altiam Hall. It gets the ball right back to Home United again. Ernie Tapai has chased everything down. And he's made sure that uh, Hairi Swap had no angle at all, created a throw in. But you see him gasping for breaths of air, you can almost forgive him. Top high, interesting cross, no one at the far post to attack it. But China took no chances. And the corner count is leveled as well, as Home United now have their fourth corner of the game. SAF, the ropes right now, feeling a dragon really breathing fire down. And Abacina looks as if someone's hands are at his throat, waiting to strangle him, but with the kind of pressure that home have been throwing in the last 10 minutes. Bernie Anderson, the last time he floated it to the far post, what's he gonna do this time? Well, he does the same, but uh, it wasn't red as well they weren't in the same frequency as attackers and now the counter attack is on and we know that nasri can lead this or should i say no alam shah can lead this because he's got support up front with uh grabovac well watched by yazid yasin and well the referee is called playback to give a free kick i don't know if we can see that again because uh if it was a free kick it'll be very good refereeing work from sk kennedy the tackle, maybe a little bit late. Let's have a look at this. Yeah, it was a free kick. In fact, uh, Idil Sharim was lucky not to, es to escape with a yellow card because uh, the foot was very, very high. Dangerously high, I must say. Azmi Osman is all set to come on for Faris Mohammed. And Faris's nightmare is over. He's woken up from his REM to be replaced by this guy, Azmi. And they need Azmi now to deliver some pinpoint crosses and put some pace along the flanks where Faris failed to do so because of uh, some great marking from Hafiz Jauhami. Kim Leng has uh, switched flanks to take this free kick. It's a free header, it's a goal to SFFC! Surely now the Warriors have clinched it and it's that man yet again who has come out with all important goals all season round. Nenad Bacina who has snuck in in a sneaky sort of way. Where was the marking? Sasi Kuma couldn't keep up with him. It was more Egma Gonsalves' man than anybody else. No, perhaps it was Sasi Kuma's man. Egma Gonsalves tried to cover it because he saw where the danger lied as the ball 
has floated right in. And the SAF FC success story this season continues. As I said earlier on, it's been their ability to take chances, snuff them out and kill the game that has been their success story. And really, to sum up both sides this season long, Home United have not been able to do that. Seven minutes of the game remaining. They were happy with a point. If it ended up as a point, SAF FC. And now they've got three in the bag. If they keep their composure. Well, Tan Kim Ling. been curbed from moving forward did deliver the free kick in front of Yazid Yassin I guess he knew more than anybody else he's asking for the time now I can tell him that it's just six minutes remaining that Yazid Yassin has been suspect all evening long with his crosses and Kim Leng, that was a foul once again the bird is given to Kim Lane from the home fans, as I have his noted. Bit of abuse on the terraces. Something from this. Anderson curls a free kick in. The result came, but didn't claim. Good tackle from Idol Sharin, but it was needed at that time. And Rizal is down with an injury. Well, there certainly will be much more stoppage time played for the second half. That's for sure. Be more injuries. And for a while, especially in the opening 15, 20 minutes, it was a stop start affair. But uh, Home United really have seen their hopes vanish in front of them due to their inability to score goals. It happened last week against Clemente Khalsa. It's happening this week yet again in front of uh, their own fans at the Bishan Stadium against SAF FC. And that's how Rizal just polaxed the challenge from his own defender, Nena Kachina. Man of the match award will be named pretty soon. And I'm sure Nena Pacina will be a top contender for it. Along with Nazri Nasser, the other goal scorer for SAF FC. Here's Tiam Ho. Sharin, spreading play out, Asmi Osman. That's much better play from Asmi. Oh, it's a real pity. He created everything, but the pass, the final effort just wasn't there. And that has been a story of Home United this evening. They've done almost everything right. The final effort has been absent. Stephen Chan with ball to Grabovac. Great work from ID Iskanda. Took three players to take it off him, but he gets it right back to Nazri Nasser. Nazri once again, <laughs> tenacious as ever. Durich though, outmuscled him, which isn't a very easy job to do. Azmi, a little static up front, perhaps tired legs sneaking in now. Ernie Tapai dropping deep to collect the ball to Ernie Anderson. Durich is asking for it, but Tapai has joined it. Now, a more patient approach this time. But where will it lead to? Idol Sharin plays it wide to Asmi. It has to lead to somewhere. The cross is finally belted in. It drops to Tiam Ho. Durich. Well, Gonsalves was just behind him. Great control by Ernie Tapai. 
Still on the It's a goal! It is a goal! SMFC are complaining to the referee that the defender was hauled. SK Kennedy says no. The spectators couldn't believe it in unison. The home United spectators just rose to their feet and celebrated that effort. The police band are happy, so are the Dragonets. And I think a yellow card has been dished out here because one of the SAF players just ran straight at SK Kennedy and uh, there was some physical contact with the referee. But Ernie Tapai has paid for his endeavors, endeavors this evening. <laughs> well, if the Man of the Match award wasn't given out earlier, there were, it was Nasri Nasser who came right back. Perhaps he went down a little too easily. There was contact inside from Ernie Tapai. But as I said, Tapai will just keep fighting and fighting for these balls. And in those situations, give credit to the Australian for a splendid goal. He's got them right back in the game. Now what can happen? Tapai's on the ball. Just a minute of play left. This time too ambitious. He rushed it. And the referee will add on definitely more than a minute of injury time right now. He's got them right back in the game, Ernie Tapai. And it was due to his perseverance and persistence, like Mosquito it was then, he just didn't want to die. Well, the referee is adding on three minutes of injury time. Which is quite strange, because I thought I saw more stoppages than that. Adi Eskanda swept, did well. Steven. Good work from Rennie Anderson. Oh, lovely work from Rennie Anderson. Well, the referee should really have played the advantage then, because Ernie Tapai had, had spun round Zainal Zainuddin and was on his way. Fandi has Azar Saleh to call on if he wants to on the bench, because uh, Rennie Anderson's influence is still not yet curbed by the introduction of Stephen Chan, and Zainal Zainuddin has had a not too much uh, change from Ernie Tapai at all, except for the first 10 minutes. Sasi Kuma plays this one in. Durich, well climbed that time. Paponya, great work by Pacina. He not only jumped, he hung in the air for a lifetime. Aido Sharit, Anderson, this is Tapai. Asmi Osman, poked forward too impatiently. Afizad, and this is Nasri. Lovely ball by Nasri to Mirko Grobovac. Closed down immediately. Nasri to the far post. That's a brilliant cross. It'll be a corner to SAF. And, well, this game certainly deserves this ending. Just when you thought the second half was just going to be a chess game, and players testing each other out. What did you know? An SAF goal, and then a home United goal, and now we're looking for a winner in injury time. We've already played a minute of injury time. We still got a couple more to go. It'll be a corner for Tan Kim Ling and SAF FC. Right into the middle yet again. Gonçalves did brilliantly well that time. Sasi Kuma headed it away. Kiam Ho. Couldn't get past Nazri Nasser. Well, the two number sevens side by side there, Ernie Tapai and Nazri Nasser, they've just been outstanding for their clubs. Tapai, good turn. Supermani, Tapai just couldn't get to it. Oh, Paponya, missed kick from him. Durich will chase this one down. That wasn't a back pass, it wasn't an intentional back pass from Papontia. It's more of an embarrassing one than anything else. Red header on, Duric muscling his way through, great work from him! Oh, just a little behind Alexander Duric, that pass from Gonsalves. And maybe a confidence lacking from Ekmar to take it on and have a shot himself. Super money, losing out to Alam Shah in the air. No Alam Shah trying to get it right back to Grabovac, couldn't do so. Kiam Ho comes out the better of this. Kim Leng fouled him. It's going to be a free kick. 
Our Tiam Hoa says, hey, that's twice, you know. Well, we've played out our three minutes of injury time. Is there going to be an added drama that's going to unfold? Gonsalves headed on, and that's the end of a brilliant game, a great advertisement for S-League football, which shows that uh, the Bishan Stadium can produce top quality teams and when top quality sides match with almost similar formations and similar types of football you do expect great entertainment and we have been entertained this evening from SAFFC and Home United to all Ernie Tapai one of the goal scorers for the protectors it was Alexander Durich and twice they had to come back from deficits SAFFC took the lead from Nasri Nasser there he is he is the man of the match as well, and deservingly. And then Durich equalized. And then in the last six, seven minutes, it was Nenad Bacina who scored the goal. But Ernie Tapai, with just a minute or two remaining, robbed Nasri of the ball and kept running and running. He did not give up the plot. Poked the ball past Rizal and three points turn to one for SAF but they'll be quite pleased with this performance SAF FC as we take a look at uh, the highlights now of this game it was going to be the most difficult of uh, the games for SAF FC that was very sure and in the first half this happened in the 14th minute Nazri Nasser with a mistake from Yazid Yassin scoring very easily the equalizer came 13 minutes later though from Alexander Duric And it was a great pass from Rini Anderson, which set it up for him. Rini became more influential after that, although he tired out in the second half. And now in the second half, Ahmad Latif Kamarudin demoralized, didn't look too confident coming into this game. Just had to lift it over Yazid Rashin, and he couldn't. But at the other end, protectors were still missing guilt edge opportunities. That was one of them, Ekmar Gonsalves. And then they couldn't capitalize on this from Durich. Ernie Tapai, well, Tap Rizal Hassan wasn't happy with him going through, but when we watched the replay, he had every right to. And this was the goal that put the Warriors back in front. He was headed down, I'm sure he had his eyes closed, Nena Bacina. But he did his very best, he headed the ball down. It came in off the crossbar, and we thought for that time, momentarily, SAF FC had all three points. Kindling knew that Yazid Yassin had problems dealing with aerial situations all evening. That time, Yazid didn't even come out to deal with it. And it was Bacina, eyes closed, ball headed down. It's almost ping pong situation right here. Well, this was the equalizer from Tapai. Great control from him. Nasri had the awareness to take it away, but Tapai, as I said, when you have a fighter in your team like that, any other midfielder or striker would have just given up hope and maybe allowed Nasri to shield the ball and hope for a corner kick or something like that. But Tapai says no, he battled and even had the, the decency as well as the composure to look up and push the ball past Rizal Hassan for a tremendous goal for the Australian. And that's how it ended. Home United 2, SAF FC 2.